Welcome everyone to Gamer Meld. Today I've got two giant stories, starting with a huge leak on Intel's upcoming XE GPU and ending it with the first Ryzen 4000 review. Okay, it's news time, and first up for today, we have an exclusive leak from Digital Trends that reveals multiple documents on Intel's upcoming XE GPUs. They were obtained during a recent internal presentation from Intel's data center group, and let's just say it's really interesting. Starting things off, it looks like Intel's XE GPUs are truly MCM parts, similar to AMD's Zen architecture. This means they take multiple smaller modules and combine them to make the final GPU. AMD has explained in the past that a major issue with this is software support, and maybe Intel has figured it out. Now don't get me wrong, we more or less saw this when Intel went over things in November, but this leak really expands on it. Unlike AMD's Zen 2 based chiplets, Intel is calling these tiles, and in this slide, GPUs will start with one tile and move all the way up to four. Unfortunately, we don't know how many cores are on each tile, but given the wattage, it's likely a lot. What's great about this is that it shouldn't be that difficult to expand further than 4 in the future for a monster of a GPU. Anyway, in this slide, you can see that there are at least three cards here, a 75 watt to 150 watt card, then a 300 watt card, and finally, a massive 400 to 500 watt GPU. They're separated into RVP and SDV, and Digital Trends thinks that the SDV cards are like the DG1, which is for software vendors and developers. That would mean the RVP is the actual versions Intel would sell. Unfortunately, because of the 400 and 500 watt versions are 48 volts, that's almost certainly a server card only. Either way, 300 watts is higher than even the 2080 Ti, so Intel very well could be planning to compete with Nvidia's best right from the start. And honestly, even if it's just on the AI side of things, it would need to compete in wattage, so clearly these cards are powerful. Next, when we go back to this slide, you can see that Intel plans to use the newest iteration of HBM memory, which is interesting, especially if they use it on the consumer parts, and given this is one architecture, they very well may. They also support PCI Express 4.0, so that's another company moving to the new standard. In the last slide, you can see that Intel plans to compete in pretty much every segment of the market, and they even mention AR and VR, so we really should expect some powerful GPUs. Let's just hope the price doesn't make me want to cry. Of course, it won't matter how cheap it is if someone gets your card number, unless you use the free service from today's sponsor, Privacy.com, an amazing service that lets you create virtual cards to use online. That means no one has your actual card number, and it's super easy to create new cards. Plus, each card is attributed to a single retailer, so if someone tries to use it elsewhere, it'll get declined and you'll get a notification. Then you just go in, delete it, and make another one. It's really that simple. You can even control how much can come out of each card and how often it can be charged. So what are you waiting for? It's completely free, and when you visit privacy.com slash gamermeld today, you'll get $5 absolutely free once you add your funding source. So check that out in the description or visit privacy.com slash gamermeld today. Next up, the first Ryzen 4000 review is in, and let's just say things are looking pretty amazing for AMD's upcoming APUs. The review was originally published by overclockers.ua, but it was clearly published by accident because it's since been taken down. Of course, the embargo clearly hasn't been lifted, so that makes sense. Luckily for us, it wasn't taken down before outlets were able to get some screenshots, so let's go over them. As you can see, it's a review of AMD's Ryzen 5 4500U, which is AMD's 15 watt 6 core 6 thread APU with 6 7 nanometer Vega CUs. But enough about specs, let's get to the benchmarks, because to say they're incredible would be an understatement. First things first, we have the GPU benchmarks, and it's significantly faster than the Ryzen 3000 APUs. I mean, remember that this is an ultra low power part, so we're talking 15 watts, and it's essentially on par with current generation consoles. They did have to run a few newer AAA games at 720p in these benchmarks, but it could still get fairly decent FPS. I mean, GTA 5 at 1080p got an average FPS of 54.3. And remember that their 15 watt parts goes up to 8 CUs, so there's a bit more wiggle room beyond this. Moving on to the CPU, which I saved for last because, uh, well, let's just look at it. Starting things off, I will say that it is a bit tough to compare it to Intel's parts because most have multi-threading, while this one doesn't. 
I personally think it's best to compare this 6 core, 6 thread part to a 4 core, 8 thread part, but remember that this is a Ryzen 5 part, so it's more of their mid-range part as well, and will likely be in mid-range notebooks. Well, when we compare it to Intel's i5-8250U, Notebook Check says that it beats it by over 50%, and comparing it to Intel's best 15 watt 10 nanometer iSIG part, which is actually an i7 but a 4 core 8 thread part, the Ryzen 5 4500U crushes it in Cinnamon Char 20 and R15. Of course, with these being laptops, heat dissipation matters quite a bit more and is more of a per laptop basis. Well, when we compare the 4500U to Intel's 10 nanometer i7 configured up to 25 watts, AMD's 15 part still wins. Basically, AMD seems to have hit a home run here, and I'm definitely excited to see their other parts in action. So while that does it for today, what do you think of AMD's next gen APUs, and what about that upcoming XE GPU? Let me know down in the comments below, and definitely don't forget to check out privacy.com slash gamermeld today. And as always, have a great day.